I'm Ben Cosgrove, I'm a Senior Project Coordinator at Armour RC, and this is the Craton 8S. The Craton 8S has a simple yet effective electronics module. This comprises of the electronic speed control, the servo, and the receiver, which is inside the box. To remove this electronics module, first you need to remove and unplug the motor wires from the speed control. You also need to unplug the motor cooling fan. Move the wires out of the way. Next, you need a two millimeter hex driver to remove the steering link screw. Like so. You then need to access the underside of the car. And then there are five screws to remove. with a 2.5 millimeter hex driver. The electronics module will fall out when you remove the final screw. So place your hand under the car to hold the ESC so that it doesn't fall out. Once the screws are removed, whilst holding the electronics module, turn the car over, like so. And then you have the electronics module, which comes straight out very, very easily. To access the receiver, you need to remove six screws on the electronics module lid. These are located around the edge of the lid, as so. Once you've removed the screws, the lid slides off very easily. To completely remove the electronic speed control from the unit, just unplug the receiver connector, and then you're left with the servo and the receiver as one unit. The servo saver is fully assembled and comes pre-greased. And you should not really need to open it but if you do want to open it this is how you do it the servo saver in the Creighton 8s is designed to always have direct response this means that the servo saver will only actuate when the wheels break the torque it is a fully sealed unit and this is also keyed into the side guard for extra support for the servo durability and servo saver performance to open your unit you need to remove the locating peg with a bearing. Inside the servo saver there is a plastic piece which locks to the screw that retains the servo saver onto the servo. This is extra security to make sure that the screw will never back out. To remove this it is a left-handed thread so you need to pay close attention. So use a four millimeter hex driver and effectively tighten like you would normally which would remove this plastic locking piece. Once that is removed, you need to go back to your 2.5 millimeter hex driver and back to normal threads, so anti-clockwise. And this then, you can see the unit is springing and it removes from the vehicle.
And here is the screw that holds the server saver onto the servo. Inside the server saver, we have two springs. The inner and outer spring. We have our metal shaft through the center. And we have our two plastic ramp angles inside. The server saver comes pre-greased and in normal driving conditions, you should never really need to look at it. However, if you do run in wet conditions or very dirty conditions, then you may be required to regrease the unit. If you do need to regrease the unit, the key areas to focus on are the ramps on the plastic part here, the opposite inside, and the shaft, the metal shaft that goes through the middle. You can use multi purpose grease for reassembly, and the order is as follows. Take the plastic piece with the ramps, place it inside and seat it with the ramps on the body. Make sure the metal washer is installed. And then you take the main shaft and align it into the unit as so. There is a marking on the metal shaft above the armor logo with an arrow and there is a line on the servo saver body which must match. So line those up, press this together, then you can install the springs. First place the small spring inside, then the larger outer spring. This is your re-greased servo saver unit. For assembly back onto the servo, we have again a keyed system. So we have a spline with a flat and the flat will line up with the armor logo. So you need to make sure the flat and the armor logo lines up. If you have removed the piece that has the servo horn underneath, then you need to make sure that your servo is centralized on your radio before you do this step. So you take your servo saver unit, place it on as so, and you will feel it lock into place. This is where you drop the screw back through, take your 2.5 driver, and you will feel everything grab together to centralize when it reassembles. Then you take your locking piece with your four millimeter hex driver. And again, you screw this anti-clockwise like you would be removing a normal screw. And then this piece locks up against the screw that holds everything together. So you will never have a servo screw come off. The final piece is to take the locating peg with the bearing and place it into the end. And that's your servo saver re-greased and rebuilt. To finish the electronics module, you need to reinstall your speed control plate. So you take your receiver plug, go to channel number two on the receiver. Noting the polarity, connect that. And then the wiring, you need to make sure that it stays within the box. It's always worth taking a little bit of time to make sure that this is correct. And then the unit presses together. And you need your two millimeter hex driver and reinstall the six screws.
you may find that the locator for the servo saver will fall out at this stage. So when you've finished reinstalling the screws, just make sure that you have this in. There's your electronics module, all assembled, ready to go. When reinstalling the power module into the car, you need to pay close attention to the way the servo saver keys into the side guard. So when you drop the electronics module in, you need to make sure that the locator slides into the side guard. This is very important. So now the module is secured into the car. The locator is in the side guard and then you can reinstall the screws and the motor cables and re-plug in the motor fan. I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to learn more about the Kraton 8S, then check out the links in the description box below. See you next time.